Department report there brings us to the topic of discussion today on Panorama, which is centered on social media misinformation on COVID-19 pan pandemic. And of course, I have as our guest this morning on Panorama, Professor Jehu Nyekwaren Naji. He is a professor of international law and a former visiting law scholar to the University of Kansas Law School, USA. Professor Jehu, it's good to welcome you to Panorama today. Thank you, my pleasure. Okay, you, you, you will agree with me looking at that report there that there's been lots of false claims, you know, becoming very rampant and widespread in the social media in this era of COVID-19, such that uh, the World Health Organization, almost uh, people don't believe them anymore. And uh, this has also resulted in avoidable cases, casualties, and people also not believing at all uh, in the existence of COVID-19. So what do you think can be done to curb this trend? Yes, uh, let me start by uh, explaining the situation with the World Health Organization. As we are well aware, World Health Organization is uh, the watchdog in terms of health globally. Uh, need I say that they have uh, failed uh, you know, uh, in a very systematic way in handling this very crisis. Uh, first and foremost, uh, when this uh, crisis started in uh, Wuhan, China, uh, World Health Organization could not identify it as a pandemic. They briefly referred to it as an epidemic. And uh, of course, it is very notable, and uh, there is a wide uh, 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 difference between a pandemic and uh, an epidemic. Because uh, I remember very well, as at the time the pandemic was already endemic in uh, some areas in China, in Italy, and in USA. World Health Organization has not come with a very clear information on that. Now, information quest or quest for information is analogous for somebody trying to look for food. So if somebody is hungry, I mean, the person can resort to any type of food in order to quench that very uh, hunger. So the rapacity of information continues to be on the rise because this pandemic has already uh, started in Wuhan, China. People want to know what happens next. What are the symptoms? Of course, we know that this uh, pandemic is syndromic. It comes with a whole lot of symptoms. Now, there are two classes of people who share this very pandemic, the symptomatic and the asymptomatic people. They're Important thing is that this transmission continues to go, even though it doesn't show any notable symptoms. Now, what the organization should have known that there is a problem on hand, not just one, but a double barrel problem. The pandemic on one side and infodemic on the other side. Of course, we know that when people cannot get information of the right source, they will resort to any other uh, place, other than quacks. Like, for example, people sit in the, at the comfort of their homes and dish out information from the internet. And of course, we know it's difficult to police the World Wide Web because there is no effective legislation to, to, to police the internet because somebody acts in anonymity uh, from one side and uh, this is information from the other end of the, the world mm -hmm. and it also goes viral. Okay. So people continue to take this information to line and sinker. Okay, uh, Prof, the NCDC has set up a crisis communication team, even on NT and all the other medias, you know, to give periodic and correct information about the situation in Nigeria. And yet this, you know, uh, proliferation of information keeps, you know, going on. Do you think the NCDC is not doing enough to, you know, properly inform the people about the situation or also, you know, trying to arrest the proliferation of information on all the medias? Good. I'm glad you asked this question. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control is doing its best, but the best is not good enough. I must be very clear here because if uh, this information has to go around to the people, it has to trickle down, it has to cascade down to the man, the woman in the rural area. For example, I volunteer to distribute information from NCDC because I know that a lot of people are not opportune to get the information from the right source. So I made that you know, volunteer to make sure that the information from NCDC goes around to the right people because if you go it's, the information is a wash on the internet where people fabricate their information about uh, coronavirus and all sorts of things. You see, on the internet, very, very despicable things. So now, NCDC has to step up uh, its uh, ante by trying to you know, improve on its uh, methods of uh, dissemination of information. Otherwise, there will be a continuous and systematic disinformation and misinformation in this very era of coronavirus, okay. which we are not yet to see the, the, the solution in sight. Okay, um, misinformation about COVID-19 is a huge threat facing Nigeria right now. What do you think could be one of other negative effects of misinformation on the people? Good. Uh, let me start from one end and end, the, end it somewhere else. Uh, before I get to the Nigerian end, we remember there was this uh, cure touted by Madagascar as a cure for coronavirus. Then this misinformation continued on the rise because People now went on the internet and said because they rejected the, 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 the solution, which is the COVID organics of uh, Madagascar, 
that Madagascar has pulled out from World Health Organization. That is, of course, a wrong information. It's misinformation. In fact, it's a systematic disinformation. So now, considering the fact that Nigeria also is producing some uh, you know, probable cures, which are still undergoing clinical trials, mm -hmm. people are aware that these trials will take some time before they will eventually be ratified for mm -hmm. effective cure. Because right now, there's no effective uh, uh, cure for coronavirus. All cures are probable. And uh, we are aware that if this uh, cures not, or this uh, treatment uh, procedure don't go through clinical trials, they cannot be ratified. So Nigeria on its own is standing on uh, eggshells on this uh, issue. So okay. we need to actually put things in perspective in order to make sure that things are done properly. Okay, Prof, let's look at it. Some of these uh, false informations on social media have actually ended up on legitimate news websites, trusted websites. Is it proper for such accredited websites, you know, to fall uh, back on unverified news on social media to source information? Absolutely not. The point here is very clear because the information dissemination is like a virus itself. It's amorphous in nature. It doesn't know any bounds. Okay. So it moves both directly and indirectly to the people. So without a recourse to write ch channel of information, the aggregated news channel can as well become victim of false information. Okay, don't you think the federal government should introduce some legislation to make it an offense for anybody to spread misinformation on the social media as a way of covering this misinformation? Yes, that would be very difficult to do because the World Wide Web is uh, infinite. So it's difficult to police the World Wide Web. And uh, there's a thin line of difference or a nuance between the Freedom of Information Act and as well the, the, the freedom of speech. And then copying this uh, will eventually may likely infringe on people's uh, freedom of speech. Okay. Well, I want to thank you so much, Professor Jehuye Kurenaji, for coming on board Panorama today. Thank you for your input. We appreciate it. Thank you.